there were a lot of comments and I appreciate everyone that reached out. I do appreciate it. I am not, <laughs> I am not, uh, I'm not depressed. Uh, I, I am very happy with what my, where my life is right now. It's just this one part of it I'm having issues with, and that's what I kind of opened up with, but I do, I think some people definitely misunderstood or maybe they didn't listen to the whole thing and they just, you know, heard, cause there were some other videos and stuff that talked about it. And I don't even know what they said, but I'm sure they weren't like, they didn't play the full 20 minutes of me and Yuli's conversation. So there was maybe some misunderstanding going on and I kind of want to just try my best to clear that. And uh, if, if Silas, if I say anything that you're like, Hey, that makes no sense. Definitely call me out on it because I'm going to try to do my best. I'm going to try to do my best to explain myself. So these were some of the comments that I saw that I was like, Ooh, I don't know if you really got what I was going after. So the first one says it's hard to imagine calling professional disc golf boring. Uh, do you realize the average dude would swap lives with you in a heartbeat way to be humble, bro. So to this, I would comment, there are tons of jobs out there that to certain people they might think is awesome and amazing, and they would love to do it. And there are a bunch of jobs out there that you wouldn't think that's the case, right? And the easiest thing would be like for me, skating. Like I don't really like ice skating all that much. So I'm sure there's tons of people out there that think being a professional hockey player would be awesome and they would love to do it. I have no desire. I have no passion in doing that. I don't like ice skating. I'm not a fan of it. So I, it's also freezing cold. If you've ever been in an ice rink and you know me, I don't like the cold. So this idea of saying, calling something boring, like everyone has different uh, feelings towards different hobbies, different jobs and all that stuff. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to come out and just say, Oh, I'm bumping the desk. Okay. I got a shaky cam. I'm on a very small desk. So I apologize. I normally like talking with my hands. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to say that some, a, a hobby of yours or something that you really enjoyed at some point in time, you like you fell out of it or for whatever reason, you're going through a weird part of where it's not as enjoyable as it used to be. So hopefully I, I, I explain that well. Um, the next one, this is why I never liked supported or was positive about Brody. When you have everything, money, wife, all the things he has, you take grinding and working hard for granted. First thing I would say, have all the stuff I have is because I worked hard. So I don't really understand. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't a, um, what, what do we call those people? Um, Silas trust fund baby. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wasn't a trust fund baby, grew up single mom. She was a teacher. Um, definitely was not handed things, uh, money and opportunities like that in life. I, I worked very hard. I think, uh, I, again, I think a lot of people don't know my whole backstory. They just know disc golf Brody, which is completely fine. And so I don't think they realize like the amount of work and effort I put into building a YouTube channel, making videos, doing all that from the get go. And also my ultimate Frisbee career, how much time effort I put into that. And so I can see how some people are just like, they just see the disc golf side and they actually don't see the full picture. Oh, Yuli's in the house, dude. You're so close. I thought it was gonna take you forever to get here. All right. How do you want to do this? I have, I have, um, you might not even need AirPods. You might just be able to go speaker, but you're going to have to probably go in a different room. Take your time though. Cause I'm just kind of responding to comments personally for me. So it's actually a perfect time. And then we'll have you. Know, oh, sweet. We're going to have the spin debate. Yes. You at least here. We can have the spin debate. Um, uh, okay. So, um, but it shows the commitment of Brody and this was a cash grab in my opinion. Again, the cash grab thing, I was, I was making three to four times the amount of money I'm making now before coming into disc golf. So I don't know how that's considered a cash grab. I've always, I've always followed. And again, this is, you know, for people that have followed me for my entire career online, they know that I've always followed stuff that I really like and stuff that I really 
love to produce, love to make. Um, if you've ever heard of good, good golf before there was good, good, there was bro five. That was a, uh, that was a very successful group. And if you know who good, good is, you know how successful they are. I could have easily continued to go that route, but I didn't like how things were going and I split from it. So the idea of, of me getting into disc golf and, you know, creating a podcast like this and doing all these things, it is what it is. Um, Jack says, I hate that you're giving these responses for immature people. They are subpar people giving responses for clicks. They aren't thought out and have zero. And well, I think there's a lot of people that uh, there was actually a lot of people that were thinking this way. So I thought it was, it was, it was warranted for me to respond to at least some of these people. Um, 79% of millionaires did not inherit the money, but a lot of people assume they all did. Interesting. Uh, wait till you get a real job and you will beg to play disc golf. And by the way, 36 is not old. Uh, I, I would agree to disagree. I think 36 feels a lot older than when I was in my twenties. I will say that. And the uh, wait till you get a real job. I actually was a teacher for a decent amount of time. I also was a camp counselor. I also, uh, worked 40 hour, 40 plus hours as a sandwich artist at subway and then worked my way up to being a manager at that subway. I've had real jobs before in a pa my past. Uh, you're, you're all good. Oh, Yuli's getting set up. I love it. I've had real jobs before in my past and a lot of those jobs I really, really liked. I love those. Yeah. Math teacher. I love those jobs a lot. And, uh, so I, I, my hardest job I would say was I was a golf course maintenance, um, worker, I guess you could say. And that was tough. Cause I had to wake up at like four o'clock in the morning and, um, just with it was like a full lifestyle change of having to go to bed super early to wake up at four to start doing manual labor for, you know, eight plus hours a day. Brody's a sandwich artist. Yes. Shay. I'm, I'm nasty behind the sandwich. Uh, I could, I can make you a nasty, nasty BMT very quickly. I'm going to be honest, Brody, you're, you've barely been in this sport and you've never finished that high. I think you're a sore loser. And I say that with all due respect, you want to always win or be, be near the top, but you can't accept defeat. That's my honest opinion. I feel like, um, okay. So I think this is a little bit off base because it, it's trying to go off of, uh, performance solely. And I try to do a good job of explaining leading into this year. I didn't have the desire, the passion that I had in previous years to go practice and grind and do all that. So before there was any sort of performance, before I went out and played in Florida, leading into it, it was a completely different. And that's what, that's what I was trying to get at is it wasn't just because I almost finished in dead last at the tournament. Like I didn't want to go and play at that tournament. I didn't want to, before I even got there, I didn't want to, um, where in years past the season would end and I'd be very eager to start learning, practicing, you know, getting better at my craft in the off season for some reason this year, that just wasn't the case. Very few people are in your situation where they can whine to their boss for 20 minutes, how they don't care about their job anymore. He admits that he practiced for his job less than eight hours during the off season and certainly showed in the results in a similar situation. 99% of people would be fired. Okay. So this is a perfect example too. Like I don't view my, I, I don't view disc golf and I don't want to view disc golf as a job because I don't necessarily have to do it. Right. And I try to make that a point is like everything that I'm doing right now in my life is because I want to do it. This podcast, I don't need to do this podcast, but I love doing this podcast every week. I love being on here, talking to our tour life crew, talking to Yuli about disc golf. I love doing this. I don't need to do this. At one point in my life, I needed to make money. I needed to, you know, find a job to pay the bills, to pay my student loan debt, to do all that. I needed that. I don't need that anymore. So everything I'm doing right now is solely because I want to do it. Also, I don't know if Yuli's technically considered my boss. I think a boss is someone where it's like they, they tell you basically what to do. Um, but I guess Yuli does that sometimes, I guess. 
Uh, I do that with my boss on the daily. I think a lot of people actually do that with their boss. All right, we got Yuli in here. Sweet, Yuli, I've got two more comments to go through. And uh, I told Silas if I... You sound, you sound fantastic. I, I, don't even, I don't even hear... I don't even hear the fan behind you. You always look great, man. No. This Wi-Fi is crisp. Look at us. Look at us. Oh, it's even better. Okay. Well, if it starts... He wants you to go landscape. If it gets choppy, Yuli, just let me know. and We can give you the Wi-Fi password. But you're Gucci right now. Yeah, you're Gucci right now. All right. Last two here, and then we'll move on to the spin control debate, which I'm very excited to get in with Yuli on this one. Um, and I told Silas, Yuli, if I say anything and you're like, that makes no sense, just call me out. All right. Uh, Brody just needs some tough love. He loved Ultimate because he was a top player and relevant. False. Uh, when I first got into Ultimate Frisbee, I was actually really bad. I didn't know what I was doing. It wasn't until my third year in Ultimate Frisbee that I actually was somewhat decent at it. So... Um, that's a little false. He liked ball golf because he was relevant with the social media world, but would never ever make it on tour again. False. I loved golf because I started playing golf at a very, very young age. It was probably the first sport that I really fell in love with, but it got to the point of where it was just kind of a little too expensive to kind of make that next step for me and the situation that I was in, in, uh, growing up. Uh, but I always loved golf and I always had something in the back of my head that said at one point in time in my life, if I get the ability to, I want to see how good I can get at golf. And, uh, I had that opportunity and I took it. Um, let's see here. This one, I, I, some people might push back on me on this, but I've talked to Hunter and Trevor. And so they're fine with me saying this, uh, it says fell in love with the game support from same company that makes his Frisbee disc instruction from Macbeth and had power. So he didn't have to overcome distance obstacle due to his social media backing. He can't, he came in love by fans and pros as the pretense helping grow the game. The problem here is Brody is not a top player being referred to as a top player. This is where his burnout happens. He will look to playing something else that he can be relevant at. I truly hope he stays with disc golf because the game needs him more than he needs the game. He is good. Again, I, I don't really know exactly what this guy's point was, but I'm not going anywhere. And I, I, I try to stress that in my last thing, regardless of whether I'm playing on the pro tour 20 events a year, 10 events a year, five events a year. I'm always going to be uh, having uh, foundation disc golf. I'm always going to have Atlas. And then me and Yuli, as, as far as I'm concerned, this podcast isn't going anywhere either. So I'm always going to be in disc golf. It's just the playing side. That's where I'm trying to figure out where does that fit in with everything. Last thing, I think some of the acidi acidity in the comments is from regular folk um, in this boat as well. Seeing someone with the possibility to earn a living at something that commentators love to do, but can only do in their spare time. Yes, it's true. When you're being paid out there, uh, expectations are no longer for the love of the game, but there are endless folks out there that have jobs simply to pay the bills that, ne that never even have the option of both providing for their family and doing it. into something they can also find fun. And once you have kids, that flexibility of following some passion, even if it gets you no revenue evaporates. Um, as far as, okay, it goes on. Okay, so I get, I get a little bit of the pushback, right? I get a little bit of the pushback. I was just trying, wait, you got my Wimby in there? <laughs> it's a $550 card, brother. Um, I get a little bit of the pushback from some folk. I understand it. I was just trying to be honest and open with how I was feeling. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a, uh, oh, man, my job sucks. I don't want to go to work. Like that wasn't what this was about. This was like a serious thing of like, Hey, this is something that I had a passion about and something that I love and that has faded. And I'm trying to figure out why, or how do I get it back or what I should do? Um, so there's that. I, I will say I still work a crap ton every day. So it's not like I'm, uh, <laughs> it's not like, 
it's not like I'm not working, uh, even though I don't have to necessarily, I, I do what I love. And that's, that's the whole idea of this. This is the first time that it felt like I went to a tournament because I feel like I, I felt like I had to go versus wanting to go. So hopefully that answered all the questions. If not, you can post some more down below and, uh, maybe I'll go on and respond to some in the text, but we're going to move forward from that because Yuli, we didn't get a chance to ask how your week went. But I actually had I actually had two fun rounds of disc golf back to back. Really? Yeah. Um, going into Lake Waco, no expectations or anything. Had a great time. Now, was it because we were on a golf cart? That definitely <laughs> helped. Having a golf cart during these practice rounds definitely helped. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. And today was probably the first day in a really long time that I woke up and I was excited to go play disc golf. So that okay. was that was good. Before I get into that, I want to touch base a little bit to some people out there listening to you respond to some of the comments real quick on my the way I view that whole thing. Okay, just really fast. First yeah, yeah. thing is when I hear. The one, the one big disrespectful thing that I hear from a lot of people is people say, talking about other people's games and how they're not relevant and they're not good and they're blah, 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 blah. Here's facts, okay? Last year, Brody made the elite team on Discraft. This is strictly done by a format that Bob and I and Mike created, which is purely performance-based. Purely performance based. Okay. If you haven't checked our team out, our team is nasty. You don't just get on the elite team, you don't just get it handed to you. So when people are like, oh, you're awful and blah, 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 that's horse crap. It's absolutely horse crap. This guy came into the game. And how long have you been playing? I started in 2020. So this is what, year four? Well, year in three five, years, year he was, five. what, 1025 rated? Something, yeah, I don't know. Something, something we're gonna talk about. We're going to talk about ratings here in a second. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's a good thing to say because that's what a lot of people categorize good players as. That's a good base, right? He took third at GBO, I believe, which is an elite series event. That's a podium finish that a lot of players will never do that are on the tour right now will never do. It just won't ever happen. He did that in three years. So when I hear people try to bring people's game backs, it's, it, it grinds my gears because of how hard I work and how hard it is to do that. You don't know. <laughs> You're on your computer at home, and you have no clue what it takes, what it's like. To get that good that quick is insane. And it's honestly one thing that we've rarely seen in our game. Rarely. It happens from time to time, but it's so rare to see somebody come in three years later, be on the elite team, take top three at an elite series. So just to put it into perspective, like that's horse crap and it's, and it's silly and it's disrespectful to other people who have done it. That's my first thing. Second thing, I work so hard. My schedule is insane. There's one person that I know be probably, besides probably Jeff Spring or something that works harder at different things than me, and that's Brody. Like, that's Brody. He does more stuff than I do, which is crazy to think about because I do a lot of things, and I do it because I love it, so I understand that. That's also disrespectful. Disrespectful to me and the things that I do to hear people sit, talk about somebody who works their butt off. Not because he's my friend, just purely because of it. I know what it takes to do all the things that he does. When you do all those things, you have burnout. Other people who strictly go and play disc golf and blah, 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 it's probably easier. It probably is. That's not the life that Brody and I chose. We chose to do all these things because it, well, I do it because I love it, first of all. But it gets tiring and it's hard. It's hard to go, okay. Monday, I have this with my Power Disc Golf Academy. Tuesday, I have to practice, um, do Jomez. Tuesday night, I do the podcast. Wednesday morning, I get up and I do something else. 
Thursday, I do another practice day. Thursday night, I do commentary, 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 rinse, repeat every single week over and over while being a husband, soon to be father, friend, brother, son, all the captain of discraft. Like these are things that people don't put into perspective the amount of time that this guy puts in. So, like, burnout's okay. And if he gets tired, it's okay. And if he needs to take a break, it's okay. And if he needs to leave, it's okay. It's his life.